Okay. Hey guys. I know last week we didn't have one because of 4th of July and all that good stuff. So we thought we'd hop on tonight and continue forward with what we normally have been doing. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. Okay. So in, I've been doing an accountability group and what I'm really noticing is a lot of us, including myself, have had this struggle of where do I find people? Anybody relate to that? What I'm saying? It's like, how do I actually find people? How do I go from just signing up or talking to the same six people every week and call that working my business, right? And so I wrote down some notes for how to expand our networks. And I was going to have my husband share on this too, Rodney, in just a minute. Um, I just thought I'd talk while she's not crying and then I can pass it over. <laughs> But basically what it is, is we want to start really focusing on how to expand your networks. And this is where people, if we're honest, they don't want to do the work, right? This is where it starts to feel tough. This is where it starts to feel hard. This is where it starts to feel like, oh, this isn't as easy as I thought it would be. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where I remember literally telling one of my friends, Lisa Youngs, I was like, we'll go down to Walmart and we'll start talking to random strangers. Like that's where I was at. I wanted Emerald so bad. And so <laughs> what we used to do that I can tell you that we used to do is we would just share with whoever would listen. Remember, it's not about necessarily what you're saying. It's the passion and what you're saying it. It's how excited you are when you're saying it. So when you're brand new, reaching out to your friends, reaching out to your family, yes. But as you there, I don't want you to continuously recycle the same people. So part of that is, is joining and being a part of your community. Part of that is, is really um, exploring other avenues to increase your network. You've probably heard this over and over again. Your net worth is your network, right? So really focusing on those kinds of things. Okay. So I need your boldness to talk to you about this. So I want you guys to be thinking about different things that you can join, whether that's through your community, your church, getting volunteering at the animal vet place, whatever that looks like to serve your community and increase your network. That is going to be super helpful. So honey, I'll turn it over to you for just a second, see what you have to share. And then I can. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Can everybody hear me? Am I muted? All right. Yeah, it seems like everything that we've been talking about for the last, I don't know, month has all revolved around people, like talking to people, expanding your network, which, I mean, we're in a network business. We're in a people business. So that's, I mean, that's what we should probably spend 99% of our time talking about is meeting new people. As long as you got new people coming in, the business is great. You ever notice that? You know, it's, if, it's when you're not talking to new people, everything stinks. Products aren't any good. The websites are bad. You know, everything's everything's negative when you're not talking to new people. But when you're talking to new people, everything seems up because you got you got stock in the back room. You know, if that's if that makes sense, you got things to work with. So, in a network marketing business, really any business, um, our 19 year old son, he is uh, taking real estate classes right now. Well, the heartbeat of real estate is talking to people getting out there and finding who's putting their house up for sale, who's needing a house. It's this, it's all the same, no matter what business you're in, it's people, it's people, it's people, it's people, stupid, you know, that's what it is. And so it seems like Alita and I, you know, we're, we're constantly talking to people and we're by no means like experts in, in, in converting conversations into customers or conversations into ambassadors. But what we are experts in is keeping for lack of a better term, we keep ourselves oiled up. You know, when we're in the hospital these this past week, we're having conversations with every nurse, every uh, room keeping, every anesthesiologist, and we're asking them. We're not just doing the, the the gratitudes, you know, the you know the highs and buys. We're asking them questions. Right? We're probing. You know, how why do you do what you do? Do you love what you do? You know, what's your goals? What are you doing? And you know, we will probably not contact one person 
that we met, the, the dozens of people that we met over the, the hospital stay, but we kept, the point was we were in routine. And it's when you're in routine and you practice and you practice and you practice, you don't necessarily need that boldness. You develop that boldness. You know, you're not going out to hit home runs every time you meet someone. You're going out to take cuts. And I'm, I'm sorry I use so many sports analogies. It's just what makes sense to me. But, you know, the more cuts you take, the more swings of the bat you take at the ball, the better you get at hitting. You know, and I, uh, I told this story yesterday in one of our groups. Um, a, a gentleman who I think he's I think he's passed away now, but he's one of the pioneers of network marketing in this country. And um, I saw him give a talk from stage. I, I think he was in his mid seventies, and he and his wife are were billionaires with a B through through network marketing. And he said that they made a point every day. Or his wife actually said this. Her name was Birdie. She said we talked to three people every day, and she said. We were millionaires years and years and years and years ago, but we still talk to three new people every day. And I'm sure they weren't sponsoring people in their 60s and 70s, but it was that that habit, that that habit just became it's like brushing your teeth at night. It became a habit to them to where they couldn't lay their head on the pillow unless they'd spoken through to three new people. And so everybody's like, well, great. I'll, I'll speak to three people. I don't care. I'll talk to a wall. Where do I find the wall? Where do I find the people? And so that's been the, the evolution of my elitist content, uh, conversations here lately is like, how do you meet people? You know, we moved to a new community a few, uh, what, four years ago. So we had fresh fields, so to speak, you know, and we get out in our community. We joined groups we joined community groups we joined athletics for, for our kids and we we associated with people we made ourselves available and um i was talking about this the other day in our business you have inside work and you have outside work the outside work is going and actually meeting people making eye contact shaking hands you know doing sip and seize that's outside work and then there's inside work that's what you can do from your phone and I was doing the numbers just the other day in the palm of your hand every day, you have this little device that has the ability to have access to almost a half a billion people. The fields are unlimited. <laughs> and so how do you access those? Well, I use myself as an example. I have a very unusual, it's not as unusual as you'd think, turns out, but I collect vintage toys from when I was a kid. Turns out the internet, there's all sorts of groups of men and women just like me. You know, they're upward mobile middle-aged professionals who have lots of disposable income and they collect things from their childhood and they go to conventions and all this stuff and they're surgeons and they're lawyers and they're, they're all these people. And I just opened myself into this vast network of basically untapped people. And so I encourage you when you're when you're when you're posting, when you're doing the inside work, when you're on your phone, think about the things that you enjoy. Think about the hobbies you enjoy, where you can find like-minded people you can relate to. Think about groups where you can bring expertise. I just joined a group called the uh, I'm going to get this wrong, the Blended Dads of Middle Tennessee. Basically, dads of blended families, you know, and. I joined that group. It's right here in my backyard, but it gives me access. I think there's 300 members in that group, you know, of men like me, you know, that I can actually go in there and develop relationships and not go in there and post, post about Plexus from day one, but I can go in there and add value and I can, I can build relationships in there. And I'm, I'm, I'm always excited about that because there's always potential. There. There's always things that I'm working. It's like, um, I grew up in the country. Uh, we do, uh, we set trot lines. I don't know if you guys know what trot lines are. When you're catfishing, you take basically an old gallon milk jug or an old two liter bottle. You fill it with air or you close it off. It's already filled with air. You put a, a fishing line on it and then you set it out in the lake or the creek or the river, maybe tie it to a limb. And it just sits there and you just go put out all these trot lines and you don't sit there and wait for something to hit them. You go about your day. You may come back in a couple of days and check those lines. 
Some of them might have fish on it. You know, some of them won't. You have to go set some more lines. But you just ch check your trot lines. And that's what I look at these, these Facebook groups, these organizations that Lita and I join. We're setting trot lines. You know, we're not going in there throwing, flying a plexus banner from day one. Yeah, I'll have my plexus hat on. I'll have my – because you always want to encourage people to ask, what do you do? Right. We, that's what we work for. We want to get that question. What do you do? Well, let me tell you what I do. But we're constantly sowing seed. We're, we're setting lines so that we can put ourselves in positions to get somebody on the hook, as cheesy as that sounds. But does that make sense to everybody? Like it's about having your radar open or up all the time. Your antennas up, you're listening, you're looking, you're not. And everybody's met these people. Have you ever met the person who does their their gig pitch in a really inappropriate place? Like you you get to witness it. Um, I saw one not too long ago. The high in our town, the high school football coach is like the mayor. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. He knows everybody. And Alita and I were standing there at a track meet watching our boys run, and he was came over to talk to us. We're just having a normal conversation. And this lady comes out of the blue and she just puts it, it was so cringy. I don't even know what she was selling, but it was so uncomfortable. And you can tell he's been approached a million times about something. And it was so cringy. But Alita and I don't have that approach. We are chill. We're gonna we harvest. We harvest curiosity from people. And he's asked us what we do half a dozen times, you know, and the intrigue keeps building, but we're not, we're not setting the hook on him. You know, we're living our life. We're doing our thing. We're being who we are, but we continue to build influence in these communities and things. Does that and make any sense at all? Yeah, it's so good. And I think this is a really good point to bring up too is that that feeling that yucky feeling of like, I don't want to just like go up to a stranger. That's when like, that's, you're going too far, right? Yeah. What we're trying to say is practice being a little more social. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Practice talking to people, caring about others and saying, Hey, like if the mom behind you is in, you know, in the grocery lineup, you can just say, we're not saying talk to her about plexus at all. We're saying just talk to her. How are you today? Oh my goodness. You know, you got two little ones. I had two little ones. I had relate to them in some way and ask them a question about themselves. Brighten people's days. Literally, that's yes. what we're saying. Brighten people's days by brightening people's days, right? Ronnie always laughs. He's like, I've never seen somebody getting so many conversations out and about. Like people just talk to me. And whether it's like, I love your dress or where'd you get that bag or where'd you get this? Because I have a very open posture that I have practiced, that I have practiced over and over. I was not always that way. And so if you're like, I'm just not charismatic, I don't have this thing. You can practice just being an open person and just really trying to like kind of spread joy, right? Think of it like I'm spreading joy. How can I make someone's day better today? Because what happens is when we're standing there with the, the high school football coach and this lady walks over and tries to sell her network marketing business is she does it from a place of fear and panic and I can see it all yes. over her face. So then what happens is I feel bad for her. Ronnie feels bad for her. And so does the coach. We're all just like, oh gosh, like, ah. And instead of her having influence, she now doesn't have any influence at all. So whereas if she would have come over and, and just had a quick conversation, hey, you, look, you know, good to see you, whatever, and moved on and messaged, that would have been a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. And so when we're thinking about this business, I really want you guys to hear this because I think that we have this feeling of like the more people I sign up, the better. And in a lot of cases, that's true. But in this instance and what we're talking about, I want you to think about people that you know that like, for example, Rosalind Payne signed up eight people and went emerald. Why? It wasn't because she went out and signed up 250 people. It's because she built relationships with the people that would be really good at this business. And she continued to share it with them in a way that they could gain that she had trust with them. So instead of just trying to get people, right? Oh, I just want bodies. I just want people, 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 people. I want you to think about how can I serve in my community? How can I serve on, on online, right? He said half a billion. And yesterday, I think it was 4 billion, right? You're like, 
There's billions of people online, billions, not millions, not thousands. There's so many people that you can connect to that you would have like interest together, right? So whether it's recipes or mom life or um, cancer survivors or like whatever that looks like, join those groups and connect to people without any expectation of obligation that they return it. And just something magical happens when we give, when we're givers, right, of our time, of our wisdom, of experiences that we've had. So like Candace has had children, her kids are having children. She could join a grandparent support group and give a lot of experience, wisdom to this is how we've adapted to, you know, me taking care of grandkids and all the things. Giving experience and what you do have experience in makes you not only feel more confident in who you are, because now you're doing what you were designed to do, which is to give back, right? That we're meant to learn things, to share those things with people. And you will gain influence that way by sharing those things. And you will, whether in my belief system, I believe that whether it's that person you're you're helping or whether it's just somebody else that it opens the door to, right? It will come back to you. you but if you're only talking to, but if you're only talking to two people a week, there's, you put pressure on those people yes. that they can't ever say no you're setting expectations on those people that they'll never be able to meet for you. Yeah. And so I wrote down some things. Okay. So I put down, get your hair, nails, anything like that, that you have done somewhere new, get it done somewhere new. Stop going to the same person who's never supported your business. Okay. Go to somebody new, go to somebody new. Um, take advantage of every opportunity to meet somebody new. So if you're looking at clothes and target, or if you're looking at, if you're at Walmart and walking down the cleaning aisle, Hey, what cleaner do you use? What cleaner do you love? Right. Take an opportunity to meet because like he said, it's not necessarily that this person's going to sign up, not necessarily that you're going to put this person on Facebook, not even necessarily that you're ever going to talk to this person again, but it's that process. It's enjoying the process of meeting new people. It will open your eyes and absolutely shock you at how many people you actually know and how many people you really can start talking to in a day. Volunteer for your kids' sports. Volunteer in a classroom. Join a club. I had a friend of mine. Um, she she's new in Plexus, but she messaged me. She goes, "I just joined an adult tap class. She's gonna learn how to tap dance." Okay, I was like, "That's bad to the bone. I love that. That's awesome, right?" So just thinking of things like that. What can I do? That's something new. Grocery store clerks, waitresses, mom in line at the grocery store. I love the fact that like Rodney is saying over and over again, you can get on Facebook and join a group of something that you're interested in. Here's the problem. We don't want to suck at anything. We're like, well, if I'm not the best at it, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have this. Like I want to be the leader. I want to be in charge. I want to do all the things, but this is where the rubber meets the road. And this is where I think that so many times people don't realize that this is where it really comes down to the actual work part is really kind of putting yourself out there and being like, okay, I'm really willing to draw my line in the sand because I can tell you right now, if I said, do you want $30,000 extra a month? I don't know a single living soul that would tell me no. I don't know anybody that would be like, you know what? No, I don't. And if I was like, and you really only have to work part-time and you can work from home and you can work while nursing a baby that's not even eight days old. And you can stay home with your kids and you can, you know, retire your husband. Like who's going to say no to that? Nobody's going to say no to that. This is the work right here that I had to do that. I still have to do that. Most people won't do. It's the really pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and being willing to suck, being willing to be like, okay, I don't know how the sip and see is going to go. I don't know how this chat party is going to go. I don't know how me joining this group for sewing class is going to go but I'm here to enjoy the process of it. And if I'm enjoying the process of it, people are going to be like intrigued. They're going to be intrigued. Why are you so happy at this sewing class? Because I'm here learning something new and it feels fun and I'm excited to meet new people. So really thinking about things that you can do to expand your network 
and really enjoying that process. We have a winning sheet that we've been doing that's 10 non-plexus people a day that you're to connect to. And that really is a fast track to six figures in a year. You have to do that to get to that place. And now that doesn't mean that those 10 people you'll ever bring plexus up to again. It's to practice the habit of talking to people and really realizing that you are in contact with a lot more people than you think. And when that gives people anxiety, I'm like, okay, I remember feeling that way too. But here's the thing is now with social media and groups and all of those things, the key is to be willing to not be great at it, to be willing to be like, well, I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm going to try it out and I'm going to see. So I want you guys to start thinking about ways you can expand your network, even while you're still messaging, even while you're still having your events and, you know, including your warm network is to really start looking outside of that and really start thinking about who can I impact? Where can I bring value to? And being a giver of your time and your energy and, you know, your talents and your gifts, because that will never return void. You guys need to know they never sign up for Plexus, even if they never do anything, it will never return void to be a great person of your community, to be a community builder. And the last thing I want to say about all of this is if people don't know where you're going, they're not going to join you. They don't know where you're going. So if you're only ever sharing products, that's what they're going to join for. When I first started, because I had a little bit of, you know, I had done a couple parties for a couple other different companies before I was just for them. I was always just like, this is what I'm, this is where I'm going. I'm having a party to cover my products with Plexus. I was like, I'm going to the top of the company. Keep in mind, I wasn't even silver. Keep in mind, it took me the entire month to get three people, two of which I forced to sign up. Okay. <laughs> like Keep in mind, I had no idea that I could go to the top, right? I had no idea. So I want you to think about that as you're going through this process and this journey is nobody knows it's going to work. Nobody's just like, okay, I for sure know this is going to work. Yes, this is happening. I had to build my belief up and do the work to match it and then watch the fruit come in. And so Part of this job, 99% of it, truthfully, is, hello, Coralie, you're so pretty. 99% of that job, of this job, is talking to people. It's saying, hey, you got to try these products. I hung up on people when they first asked me what Plexus was because I panicked, right? I would host events and absolutely feel like I would, you know, I'm going to go crazy. You know, I don't know what's happening. I'm scared, whatever, Um, you know the one it's just, you have all the feelings and those are all normal. So what are you willing to do to get out of your comfort zone to make this dream possible for you? That's where I want your brain to be is stop. Instead of saying, I can't get people. Don't let that be an excuse. Be like, you know what? No, I've got wisdom to share in this area, in this area, in this area, I'm going to join these groups. I'm going to share these things and I'm going to make a difference and do this. And I'm going to, I'm just going to do it, whether it works or not, whether it does what I think it will or not, I'm going to do it. That's all I got. You guys know I'm awkward at editing. <laughs> just a hard stop. Everyone's like, and what? Hey, I'll add one more thing. If, if I, if it's okay. Is it good for me? Can I, can I talk? <laughs> you don't have to ask me. I wish you'd ask me more. Right, well, just a... <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, um, so I don't know if, if y'all are like me. I, I'm not naturally curious about other people. Um, I don't know if that's just the man in me or what, but I normally don't really don't really care about <laughs> you know what people got going on in their lives. And so that was a skill I had to learn because it's like, you know, hey, how are you? Great, good, and just walk away. But this book right here, I don't know if you can see this or not. It's a book called Skill with People. Does that come in? Skill with People by Les Gilbin. Changed changed my life. And it's a super thin book. Uh, you can read it in about 20 minutes. The audio book, I think, is 25 minutes long. But it's just, if you, if you struggle like I struggled with, um, like, maintaining a conversation, 
like keeping it going, that that uh, that's the book right there. It's just a, there's a few pointers in there that he gives that can make well, it made me to where I can actually hold a conversation with a complete stranger for, you know, 10, 12 minutes. And um, it's really great for introverted people too. Um, right. Extroverts, but still like it talks about not saying I, me, yeah. my, that kind of stuff. It's asking the question. Yeah, it's great for yeah. introverted people to get them to talk to people. And it's great for extroverted people to shut up about themselves and talk to people. <laughs> That's what it's great for. <laughs> yes exactly exactly so it's really really good but it just reminds you and makes you feel safe because do you think about like when you can go into a meeting and you know exactly what's gonna be talked about or you feel like you're the expert on the situation you're not scared right you're like okay like I can go in and do this like if you're a homeschool mom you just walk in and you, you're like I'm gonna teach you about homeschooling or if you're you know, I'm just trying to think of things like where you're like, you've been there and done that. Maybe it's like a, you go to a first time mom's house and you've had four kids. You're like, I've been here. I've done that. Like, I know exactly what to do to help you. That kind of comfortability, getting that comfortable talking to people, just asking them about themselves, practicing that skill set. Tell me about you. How's your day going? I hope you have an amazing day. You know, what cleaner do you love? when you're standing in the line, what diapers do you use for your babies? I'd love to know, you know, and then they're always shocked when they're like, how many kids do you have? After I've asked them 5 million questions and I'm like, I have nine kids <laughs> and you're asking me for, you know, but people love to talk about the stuff that they know. And that really helps to build relationship. And so, you know, just as human beings, we love to talk about ourselves. We love to talk, talk, talk. And so just getting out there and practicing, expanding that network, because if you think about it, if this is all you have to do to change your entire family's future, and the number one excuse I hear is I don't know anybody who wants to do this. I didn't know anybody that wanted to do this either. I had to go find some people, but it was worth it to me. If you had three gold bricks in your backyard, and somebody said to you, you could retire your entire life. You got to find these three brick, gold bricks in your backyard. And your backyard, let's say it's a half an acre. It's going to take a minute to dig them out and to find them, right? But you're not going to just be like, you know what? Never mind. I'll just leave it out there. I'll just mow the grass every day and never think about it again. You're going to dig for them. And so really thinking about, am I digging for people or am I waiting for people to come to me? Am I thinking posting is working my business? Am I really asking people, Hey, I really want to do this with you. Let's, you know, am I being clear about where I'm going and what I want? Okay. That's it. That's all we got friends. I hope that was helpful. It's, you know, it's baby season over here. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I love you guys have an amazing week and we'll see you next week.